Hi guys, and welcome back to yet another practical Rhino Jewelry CAD tutorial. And in today's lesson, by popular demand, I'm going to be showing you one method that I use to create this smooth, slick, oval signet ring. Now, as well as the how, I'll always be explaining the why, breaking down my decision-making process along the way. We'll also take a look at one or two manufacturing considerations to take into account when designing signet rings with this method. But out of the way, let's get started. Before we begin, let's have a quick look at how I've set up some of the settings in my Rhino. So, first of all, object snaps, bottom left of the screen. By default, I have end, mid, perp, tan, quad, and project turned on. The other snaps, I turn them off on as I need them. And here you go down to the bottom center of the screen. The only things I have are ortho or orthographic, O snap, which is, of course is your object snaps, and record history. Then looking at the right hand side, if we switch to the layers tab, if you don't already have that open, I've deleted all of my layers um, and just start with one default layer and then I add layers as I go, a bit like in Photoshop. And this is a thing I've started doing myself because I find it's uh, an easier way for my students to get their head around using layers. And um, it can sometimes be confusing when you've got five, six layers of all different colors and you start creating objects and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I find that if you create layers as you go, it makes more sense, especially when you're beginning to learn Rhino. So with that out of the way, let's get started with the model. So as with most modeling tasks, we're first going to draw the constraints of the model. And constraints are parts of the design which we know um, are predetermined. So as we're creating a signet ring, um, the first constraint will be the finger size. So this is going to be a oval pinky signet ring. So I want a finger size of a K. Um, so let's make a layer to put our finger ring curve onto. Um, so we're going to go to the layers tab here on the right and the symbol of the red, white and blue piece of cake. Um, if your layer tab isn't open, just type in layers in the command bar and it will pop up. Let's create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon here. I'm going to, going to call this finger size. Okay, so you've got finger size. And let's make this layer uh, brown by clicking the color swatch from the custom color list. I'm going to choose brown. Now we need to make sure we're active on this layer. So whatever we create is automatically assigned to it. So I'm going to click on the tick here below finger size. Um, excuse me, the tick next to finger size below default. So I know I'm active because I've got the tick and it's bold. If I go back to where I was to move myself onto the finger size, I just click below the tick from default or roughly in line where it is. That will switch. And I know I'm on the layer because finger size is in bold. Now, a common issue um, that I've seen students have with switching layers is um, some commands won't allow you to switch layers while you're in command. Okay. So if in doubt, press escape twice. That will clear any commands you've got running, and then you should be able to move layers. So back to the plot. Let's open the front view. We're active on the finger rail layer or finger size layer. Let's go to the circle command here, center circle radius. Center of circle is as ever with most of our modeling of uh, rings and most designs in general. We want to use lines of symmetry. So I'm going to click zero. So put the center of the circle in the center of our world and press enter. And then make sure that we're on diameter. If you're already on radius, just look in the command bar up here and click diameter and that will flip it. Um, and we're going to type in um, 15.9, which is approximately a size K. The next constraint that we need to add is, of course, the shape and size of the signet rings head. So let's do that in the top view. So double click front, double click top to maximize our top view. And just to make my view a little bit clearer, I'm going to turn the grid off. So I'm going to press F7 on my keyboard, which is the shortcut to disable the grid. And let's go back onto the default layer because we're going to use this for most of our curve creation. So click on the tick. Uh, it's gone bold. We've got the tick. We know we're active on the default layer. And we're going to draw an ellipse for um, the head shape because we're creating an oval, in other words. So let's go to ellipse from center. Ellipse center is, of course, zero, so it's slap bang in the center of our world. Now we need to draw the, the axes of the oval. 
So we want to create this signet ring as an oval, which is 10 millimeters by eight millimeters. Now, as we know, um, everything that we do in CAD, we have to consider the manufacturing post processor. So assuming that the signet ring will be cast, we need to allow for the skin of the casting um, to be removed in the finishing process. So filing, papering, polishing, etc. Um, so if we want a 10 by eight head, I would generally do it slightly larger. So really I want my head to be 10.2 by 8.2. So I've got an extra 0.1 essentially um, around the top of the signet to file and finish back. So the finish size becomes what I intend. So first um, end of axis or end of first axis, excuse me. So let's do the height to, or the, uh, yeah, the height uh, north south. So we want 10.2. So half of 10.2 is 5.1. Now, if I had a number which was difficult to uh, to determine what 50% of it was, um, if, or if your mental arithmetic isn't great, like mine isn't, um, is a sort of a bit of a cheat we can use in Rhino to calculate things. So I can type in literally 8.2 forward slash 2. And that will give me, excuse me, I've done the wrong one. We're doing the white height first, aren't we? So sorry, let's step back a little bit. We want 10.2, so 10.2 divided by 2, okay, enter. And that will give me, automatically give me 5.1. If I didn't do this, my signature ring head will be twice the size because we're drawing the axis from the center to the top. So I click there, that sets the first axis at 10.2. Now we want 8.2, so I'm going to type in 8.2 again, slash 2, or forward slash 2, that gives me, automatically give me 4.1. Enter and left click. So just to demonstrate, if I analyze distance between the end here and the quad there, it tells me I've got 10.2. And if I go the other way, it tells me that I've got 8.2. So we can be confident that this is the right size. Okay, so now we've got the shape and the size of the head determined. We need to determine its height above the finger rail. So let's go back into our front view. Um, actually, before we do that, let's maybe turn the grid back on the top view by pressing F7. Go back into the front view. And let's find the ellipse that we just drew, which is here. So this is relative to the height of the finger rail. So let's move it with transform, move, snap to the projected quad mid here. Now, obviously, I've got project on, so I can be sure that no matter what I'm snapping to, as long as it's in the center, the uh, ellipse won't get moved north and south as I snap to between points. So I do like having projecting all the time for that reason. I find it makes the modeling a little simpler. So let's snap to here, left click, snap to here. Oop, quad perp. So that was with the move command. I'll do that one more time. Then that was very clear. So transform, move, object to move, the ellipse, enter, point to move from. It's mid there to the quad there. Left click and it's moved. So now we have the sort of the base point we need to move up by a given distance. So I want the height of this signet ring head to be three millimeters. So again, going back to this whole discussion about tolerance and manufacturing, um, and making things which are suitable for the post processors. If I want a three millimeter high signet, when it's finished, I probably want a height of around um, 3.1. So that head can be finished down. So it um, comes down to three millimeters and is polished at that height. So. Let's click our line. We're going to use the transform move command again. Point to move from center. I'm going to type 3.1, enter. And then this constrains my movement. Again, note I've got orthographic on, so I can very easily keep it vertical. And I just left click to apply the movement. So if I analyze the distance again between here and here, you'll see that that is exactly 3.1 millimeters. Now let's go into perspective and have a quick look. So we're starting to build up a skeletal form of our signet ring. And the next stage is to draw the shoulder for um, the top part of the signet ring or the left hand side of the, of the shank or the ring, whatever you want to do, refer to that as. So let's go back into our front view. Okay, now I want the depth of this signet ring to be 1.8 by the time that it's finished. So I'm going to do a depth of 1.9. So let's first start by just simply offsetting our circle to give us an outside curve, which is 1.9 deeper. So 
let's click our circle and then I'm going to go to the curve menu here and then go to offset and offset curve or I can just simply type in offset like this press enter it says distance equals it's currently two that was the last distance I used for this command so I want to change this I'm just going to type 1.9 enter and then I simply have to choose the outside or inside for the offset. So a lot of my students, when they first use this command, this confuses them a little bit. They think, oh, I just type in the distance and press enter and it does the command. Now, Rhino wants to know which way you want to offset because you might be going inside or outside of the curve. So just make sure that you positively move your mouse outside and then left click. Then we'll have gone 1.9 from the inside to the outside. Okay, so now with that determined, we can begin to draw the shape of the shoulder. Now with most signets you'll usually do one of two things. You will do a straight line that tangentially transitions into the curve of the shank or you'll do a curve line which bows up and hits the side of the head here. I think in this instance we're going to take advantage of the tangent snap or tangential snap here um, by drawing a straight line from the quad to the point on our circle where it's tangential. So that means the point where it naturally flows out and gives us a nice smooth transition. So let's click polyline here. It says start of polyline. So first is the head here, so the quad on the left hand side of the head. And now I'm going to point my crosshair roughly at the circle until I find the tan. So there is the tangential snap. It's found it for me. So I left click and enter, of course, to say that I don't want to add any more points in the polyline. So I'll do that one more time. So polyline. Snap to the quad, snap to the tan. Left click, obviously, because I've used the polyline command, it wants to keep going, but I don't want to, so not sure what the solution is. Look in the command bar, what does it say? It says press enter when done. Okay, I press enter. There we are. Now we need to position this on the opposite side. So let's just grab our line, type in mirror in the command bar, press enter, start a mirror plane, the center of our ring, which is zero, enter. And then again, I've got author one, so I can safely move my mouse straight up or straight down to create the mirror plane. And I know it will be exactly on the other side. So all we need to do now is remove the top part of our circle. So to do that, we'll use the trim command. So let's first click trim. It tells us to select objects to, excuse me, I've used split, they're not trim, sorry, here's, here's trim. It says select cutting objects. So cutting objects are our two shoulder lines. I press enter. It says select object to trim. I click the top of the circle and then press enter again or right click my mouse to say that I'm finished. So you can see that I get a really nice smooth tangential transition from the shoulder into the curve of the ring or the shank. So with that done, we can now join these three curves by shift clicking them and pressing the join button. And that tells me that it's joined three curves into one open curve. So let's now go back into perspective. And you can see that our skeletal form is beginning to take shape. So now we need to draw the side view of the top half of our signet and also the shape of the band at nine o'clock here and three o'clock here. So actually the bottom half of our band at the minute isn't really relevant. So I think what we're gonna do is remove the bottom half and just concentrate on creating the top surface, which will form 90% of the creation of this design. So let's just go back into the front view, click split. I'm going to choose a point in the, um, command bar here because I don't have a line to split with. I could draw a line to split it, but we'll, we'll just use the point object here. It says select curve to split, so we choose our curve. And then I'm going to snap to the quad here, move my mouse to the other side, snap to the other quad there, left click, and then press enter when I finish splitting. And I know that it's been split into three pieces, so we've got one, two, three, and we're just going to delete the back piece. So it goes back into perspective. And now we can begin to first draw the uh, the shape of the profile or the cross section at three o'clock and nine o'clock. Let's first of all determine the width 
that we would like our signet ring to be at three and nine, as, as just stated. So I'm going to draw everything on the left hand side here at, at, at nine o'clock. So I'm first going to begin by drawing a circle, which is the same diameter as the width of the ring that I want it to be here and here. So let's go into the top view, go to the circle command, and it doesn't really matter where I draw this one, I'm just going to randomly click here, top left corner, and it asks me for a diameter. Now I want the width of my signet ring there to be uh, three millimeters. So again, back to this whole finishing thing and making the models practical, I want 3.1. So I'm going to type 3.1, obviously, oops, 3.1. Obviously make sure that we're set to diameter, not radius, and press enter. Let's go back into perspective. And we can see our cross section here. And I want to cut this in half because we only want half of the circle to create a D shape. So do you remember the split command we just did a minute ago on the back of the shank? Let's do the same thing. So let's choose split. Object to split is this. I press enter or right click, click point because I don't have any objects and this will temporarily create them. Quad, quad, enter. I split it into two pieces and we can just remove this side. Now let's move this with the move command. So it's quad or midpoint here snaps to the bottom of our shoulder or the nine o'clock position of the shank here. So transform, move, objects to move is our circle. I press enter. From the quad or mid to the quad uh, snap just there. Now you can see that it fits nicely here but if we look in the front view it doesn't quite stretch to meet the inside of the finger rail. Now don't worry about that because we're going to rectify that with the way we create the top surface or the, the, the skirt surface I refer to it as a signet ring. So let's just continue by first mirroring this shape on the other side. So as you did previously transform mirror or type mirror zero enter i've got all for one so i can very safely work in perspective and get the correct uh, excuse me the correct mirror plane left click and you've got one side and the other side now we just need to connect these with two lines to close the shape so one way to do that is just to simply use a polyline click on the start here and the end there or well, technically the end snaps on both curves hold down shift Press join, join these together. Now we have it um, as one open curve. So we just need to close this off. Obviously we could do the same thing again, draw two curves. Or we can use the close curve command, which I just type in close CRV. It says select open curves to close. Well, it's this one and I press enter and that will automatically find the ends and create the shortest distance between them, which in this instance is obviously a straight line. So there we have our top close curve our bottom closed curve and then we've currently got two open curves on the side. Now this will be very important for the surface creation command that we will ultimately use to create the surface which runs around the shoulders and up to the head of the signet ring. So before we move on let's just have a quick look at one very simple way to create this uh, skirted surface which runs around the shoulders um, between the head and the halfway point of the ring. Now we could just use a simple two rail sweep to do this. So just the idea of demonstration, don't feel as if you have to follow through um, with this command, as we're ultimately going to use a more sophisticated um, method. So let's just give it a go with surface sweep two rails. So one, two rails and cross section one, two. So I've got my open curves as the rails and my closed curves as the cross section. The seam position is correct automatically. I press enter and then we can see we get a preview um, if we have maintain height on you can see that it gives us a vertical transition down and then up and if we have it turned off it scales the cross sections between relative to the distance between the rails giving us a more bulbous um, sort of top of the skirt here before pulling in eventually back down into the inside now this method may be fine for the geometry that you want to create. My only issue with it is that it gives us very little control over the side view or the right view of the top part um, of the head of the signet going into the side. So we've either got bulbous or, oops, excuse me, maintain height, or this sort of gentle S shape. 
Now, I find that neither of these generally gives me the result that I want. And as I said, we don't really have much control. So if we're going to use Rhino, which is a surface modeling software to create the services that we want, we need to look at using a more sophisticated command that gives us more control. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm just going to apply this and then delete the surface because we don't need it. And before we move on to creating um, the surface that we actually want, let's just uh, have a look at what we've got. So we've got our top and bottom curves and we've got our side open curves. And essentially what we need is to draw the same thing as we've got here, but from the side. Okay. So to do that, we're going to use um, a really uh, favorite command of mine called blend curves. Okay. So to do that, let's go into the right view. And to make things a bit easy to see, I'm going to turn my grid off by pressing F7. Let's turn the grid off. Um, so one of my favorite ways to use the blend curve command is to draw two sticks to um, input the direction that the curves flow between. So this will probably make more sense when I start doing it. So let's start with drawing a stick with the polyline command. Snap to the top quad of here and let's just go up. Doesn't matter how far, but let's just go to there and then right click to finish or enter and do the same from the bottom position down. Okay, so we've got two vertical lines. Now note here that I've got record history turned on. If I click my history, you can see I can turn it off and on. If I right click it, I've got always record history and update children on. Okay, so we're not really going to go into this in too much depth today. But note that this command combined with the blend curve and the surface creation command we're going to use, which we'll get onto in a minute, can be uh, quite a nice chain of histories to modify, design, and develop it. But we're going to stick with um, a simple option, which I find is quite good for most signets. Okay, so if I just use the blend command first to show you how it works. Then we'll look at changing the inputs, i.e. the lines we've just drawn. So let's type in blend curve. So blend CRV is the command, press enter. And it says select curve to blend. So we choose somewhere near the bottom of the top curve and somewhere near the top of the bottom curve. So it knows which ends the transition between. So click the bottom one and you can see it creates this nice transition. Now by default, when this box pops up, you may not be on tangency, you'll probably be on curvature. Okay, so you can see by flicking between one and two, and the one and two here relate to one here and two here. So basically, this curve is two, and this curve is one, or the transition between them. So I normally, nine times out of ten, find that tangency gives me the best result. Okay, now I can obviously play with these handles by clicking one of the balls and dragging it up or down, and left clicking again, left click again, up or down. Okay. But we're going to use just the default option. So to reset this, I'm just going to click back onto a different option and back to tangency. Okay. So one is on tangency, two is on tangency. Okay. And I find this gives me the simplest transition between two curves. So I'm going to press OK. So this has given us a nice curve, but generally we want the head of the signet to have something akin to a draft angle or a slight slope on the outside before it comes back in. Okay. So as we've got the history on, if I update the rotation of these curves, it will update the curvature of the curve network curve between them. So to demonstrate this, let's start with the top curve. I'm going to go to transform and rotate, zoom in a bit, and I'm going to choose center of rotation as the bottom of the curve because that's where it's flowing from. Now angle or first reference point. I'm just going to type in an angle, and I generally find a signaling head of 30 degrees gives a nice result. So I'm going to type in 30 and press enter. And you see that it's automatically updated the curvature. So if I undo with control Z and redo with control Y, it's corrected the curve to match the new angle. Okay, so that's 30 degrees up here. Now on the bottom one, we need to do 15 degrees. So Let's go to transform, rotate again, into here, enter, center rotation, the top of the curve this time. So I'm going to type 15 and enter. Ah, so I've made a mistake here. You see it's going inwards. So I actually need to go minus 15 degrees. So let's undo that. Go to transform, rotate, center of rotation here, and I'm going to type minus 15. And that's corrected the angle. So I generally find whatever angle you have here, 
if you half it, divide it by two for the bottom angle, that will give you a really nice transition once we punch through with the uh, finger rail to trim away the surface, which we're going to do in a moment. If you don't have the history on when you do this, obviously it won't update the curve. So all you need to do is delete your curve and re-blend curve like this onto your new curves. Okay. So if you're not comfortable with history and it scares you a bit, don't worry about it. Just redo the blend. So tangency, tangency, not going to mess with the lines and press. Okay. So if we go back to 3D, or perspective rather, we can see that we're starting to create the other sides of the sort of skeletal form of our signet rings uh, shoulders. So now we've got this, we don't need these curves anymore, so I'm going to delete them. I generally tidy up my models as I go. And then we're just going to use the mirror command. Again, make sure we've got ortho on. It makes mirroring very easy in perspective. It's like zero, enter, and then I'm just going to move my mouse to the right or the left and not snap to anything. And there we have the other half in place. So now we have got more data to input to create a much more sophisticated surface between these one, two, three, four, five, oops, five, six curves. Okay, so let's move on to the next stage. Before we create the surface between our curves, let's first create a new layer. So let's go to the layers tab, again, red, white, and blue cake slice, new layer, and let's call this uh, SRF1. Okay, so SRF1, short for surface. Let's make this a different color. I'm going to go with, from the custom color list, C green. And let's make ourselves active on this layer. So we're going to use a command called curve network or network surface. It depends where you access it from um, to create um, a surface from a compound of these six curves. So you could think about it a little bit like a multi rail surface. It's not quite how it works, but it's a good reference point to understand it. So let's imagine that these four curves here are rails. And these two closed curves here are our cross section. So what we're doing is essentially, in this instance anyway, is a multi-rail sweep, kind of. Okay, so let's find the command. So we go to surface and curve network. Okay. If you can't find it or you want to type it in like a lot of people do, the command is actually called network SRF, network surface. Okay. I'm not quite sure why they're different. There'll be a good reason for it. But if in doubt, that's how to find them both. So it says select curves and network. So I'm going to start first with my, what I would normally do for rails with my rails or my four open curves, which run around the outside. So let's go one, two, three, four. And then our closed curves, which are kind of like profiles or sections. One, two. Okay. Then I press enter. And this box pops up. Now, I think to note about this command is, is that it's never 100% true to the curves that we drew, it's an, it, it gets close, an approximation, a bit like patch if you've ever used that command. So we have two tolerances we can play with. Now by default, I have my edge tolerance set to 100 for the millimeter, so 0.001. So that's controlling how accurate the edges, so the edge up here is to that curve, and obviously this edge, look inside, is to this curve that we drew. So generally within, a, within 100th is acceptable, okay. Then we've got the interior curves. Now I find that having this set to, um, excuse me, my edge curves was a thousandth, my interior curves is a hundredth. Okay, I beg your pardon. So thousandths for the top. Now interior, that's controlling essentially the smoothness between the edges. So the lower this number, the smoother it will be. So sometimes I'll play with this interior curve number till I get the result that I want. And by default, as you can see, I've got it on a hundredth, as I, as I just said. So if I, just to show you, if I re remove the zero, click between the boxes to update it, you see it's got slightly smoother. Okay, I go back to add a zero, click between the box to update it. It's got a slightly more complicated. Now I think in this instance, the difference is marginal. So I'm just gonna stick with my default, which is a hundredth, okay? So once I'm happy with that, um, and don't worry about the positions here, just leave them as position and press okay. And you can see that we've got a much more smooth, curvy, and as I said, sophisticated surface compared to the rail sweep. And note also, it's one continuous surface. There were no splits in the edge. 
Okay. So we've got this sort of uh, skirt shape that I've referred to, or it looks a bit like the end of a, of a, of a hairdryer. Um, you know what I mean? So the hairdryer is here and air comes out here. So um, this is the skirt shape that I was referring to earlier. So now we need to obviously punch a hole through this to create our finger rail and see ultimately what it's going to look like. Because as we punch through with here, we're going to lose the line here. So that's why I generally find the 30 and 15 degree angle gives me a good result once this is punched through. Let's have a look. So let's go into the front view and I'm clicking on my uh, finger size curve here. And I'm going to click trim. So select objects to trim. Obviously, I'm just going to click here and here until it goes through. Press end to end done. And there we start to get a much better idea of how this is going to look. So you can see we've got a really nice draft angle here through to a smooth transition into the side of the shank or the, the ring profile. Okay, so obviously this is an open surface at the minute, but don't worry about it. we will be closing this off shortly. So what are we missing? Well, we're obviously missing the top and we're missing the back of the shank. Let's do the back of the shank first. So to do that, we're just going to simply do a rail sweep from one surface edge to the other. But I can see here, if I just turn my default layer off, that we've got a nice continuous edge here and we've got two split edges here. So if I try and sweep these two to that one, it's not going to work. So if I just show you what happens, if I sweep one, I can't get the whole thing. So the result will be this. It will go from the full to half. Okay. So to get around this, we're going to duplicate these two edges into one single curve that should then match the curvature on the other side. So let's go back onto our default layer, turn it back on, make myself active on it. And we're going to obviously have to remove this curve because it's going to be in the way. Now you could think, well, why don't we just split this curve and use this curve? But if you remember what I said a moment ago, the curvature that this, this uh, network surface creates won't exactly match the curve we use to create it. If I zoom in, you'll see there's a very slight difference between them. So it's generally a safe idea or a good idea to remove the input curves that we drew earlier. So I'm just going to get rid of all of them because they're not needed at all. So now we can safely use the duck edge command. So if I type in duck edge or go to curve from objects, duplicate edge. So I'm going to click this edge and this edge, just connect the two sides together, press enter or right click the mouse, and then just remember to join them together with the join command, or I can press control J on the keyboard. And it tells me that two curves were joined into one open curve. So now I should safely be able to sweep um, the profile on this side to the edge on that side. So let's give that a go. Let's go back onto my surface layer. Let's go to surface, sweep on rail. Rail is obviously the back of my ring rail or ring curve. This cross section on the right hand side and then this cross section on the left hand side. So they're in corresponding sides. Press enter. And this will then do a really nice sweep between one section to the other. And we're not going to change any options, just press OK. Now all we need to do is obviously remember to join these two surfaces together because they're both separate currently. And then we've got the outer shell of our signal ring. So all that remains to do is to put a surface on the inside and create a surface that fills the top. So let's begin with the inside missing surface. So we're just going to do this with a very simple loft. So we go to surface and loft, and we're going to do the top half and then the bottom half in two separate operations. So we're going to choose the right side at the top from the left side. And I press enter or right click. Style normal. So we'll just, because we've only got two lines, it will just create a simple um, straight surface well curved straight surface flat surface should i say between them so press ok and then we just need to do the same at the bottom ok and obviously remember to join all of our surfaces together and then we've just got the very top surface to fill in to finish off the signet it would be very tempting just to use the CAP command 
clicking on the object to find the flat closed top of the signet ring and close it off. Now the only issue with this comes back to uh, our again our focus on manufacturability. Assuming you're casting this ring, flat surfaces in casting generally don't get along. They will tend to sink. So if you imagine this being cast as the metal is poured into the plaster, which is basically creating a mold for the wax or the 3D print, um, as the metal cools, it can sag in the center. Okay, so it won't stay completely flat. Now it may be that it doesn't matter too much and you can finish it down, but we want to maintain uh, the approx height we've got here. So a trick I like to do is to add a very slightly domed surface to the top of the ring. Obviously, you can use this to advantage. We could create a more smoother signet ring, almost live like a bomb ring. Um, but in this case, we just want to compensate for that potential sinking. So let's undo the cap. And we're going to create a curve which runs from this side of the ring to the other, which has got a gentle slope to it. So we're going to use the curve, um, sorry, the blend curve command that we used earlier, if you remember, to create the side profile curve in here when we did the network surface to create the, uh, the skirt. So we need a curve on this side to blend to from this edge. So let's use the extract iso curve command. So I'm going to make myself active on the default layer so this curve contrasts against your surface. And we're going to go to curve from objects. And then we want for, oops, we want for excuse me, we want to find extract iso curve. So there it is. So select surface for iso curve extraction. Obviously, it's our surface here, and you'll see we have an iso curve that we can choose anywhere on the surface. Now it may be that when you run this command, it's going the other way. If this is the case, just click toggle in the command bar, and it will change the UV direction. This is whether it's going up or down, essentially, or left or right. So I want to snap to the mid here, so it's opposite my edge here. Now we can use the blend curve command we used earlier to blend from one side to the other. And obviously by default with tangency, we get a very steep curve. So I want this to be a bit flatter. So let's maximize the front view. Let's move the box so we can see both, zoom in a bit. And what we want to do is pull this curve down. Now, if I just grab one hand and pull it, it will not be a symmetrical blend. So you see this side is lower, that side is higher. Now, obviously if the design called for that, you could use that to your advantage, but we don't want that in this instance. So I'm just going to reset my tangency for two. There we go. We've got two here, one here, got two and one. And I'm going to hold down shift and left click one of the balls. Let's, start, let's use the left one. Release shift. And now you can see the uh, the handle is, is, is symmetrically reducing. So it's the same on both sides. So hold down shift, you click one of the balls, and then you can release shift. You don't need to hold it down. And I'm going to pull this down until I've got roughly the curvature that I want. So I'm going to go with something about that. Okay. Then press enter when I'm happy or right click. And you can see that we've got this very slight curve which naturally flows out perfectly from one side to the other. Now we're going to use the rail revolve command to fill this in. Okay, we can't use a rail sweep because it's an oval shape, it's not round. So we need to split this in half. So we'll just simply use the split command here. And object to split is obviously our curve. Enter, and then we're going to choose point. So I'm going to snap here, left click, and then enter to say I don't want to split it in any more places. Enter. Now let's just split my curve into two pieces. It tells me so in the command bar. So let's delete one side. I'm going to remove the right hand side. And while I'm here, let's remove this curve because it's not needed anymore. Now we need to revolve this curve around the edge of the signal. So let's follow through the command. So surface, where revolve. This is our profile. So we click this. Then it asks for the rail curve, and that's the edge of the signet ring's head. Now it says start a revolve axis, or axis, excuse me. So we want to go up and down because that's the um, rotation plane um, of this curve around the top of the head. So the easiest way to do that is just to go into the front view. And I'm going to choose zero as the base. Enter, and then I'm just going to go straight up again. We've got author one, so it keeps everything in line. And I'm going to left click to say spin around the axis of this curve. So it's imagine it's like something spinning around an axis or uh, spinning around a pole. So if I click this, that profile has now spun in this direction 
around the axis that I drew that was straight up. So all that's left to do now is to click on these two objects, join them together, and with any look we should have one complex polysurface, and we do. So let's tidy up by deleting the curves we don't need. And then if we have a look at this, you can see that we've got a very smooth signet ring that really nicely smoothly transitions into the back of the band. And this is something that isn't too easy to do with signets. And this method of, of one of many methods that I have used and used to create signets, I find is a general method that works with lots of different shapes. So this will work round with an oval with a cushion um, without really having to change the method too much. So if we go into a render view perhaps, and let's go to the materials tab and input a simple metal. Let's choose uh, metal and go to gold. And let's go with yellow here. And then let's just simply drag this onto the poly surface to apply it. You can see that we've got no obvious seam points around the model. And actually having this slightly domed surface makes it look better too. It doesn't look quite as harsh. You've probably seen when you render things before, especially with flat surfaces, that they can look a bit dull and dead. This just gives a bit more contrast and makes it look a that little bit more realistic. Well guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them. To see more content like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my page on Facebook. If you'd like to get in touch about having your own one-on-one -on -one bespoke online CAD lesson with me, do get in touch. I'd be happy to have a chat with you about it. You can find my email address in the description box. See you next time.